All right. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Looks like everybody can see me. All right. Perfect. All right. Good. Good. All right. Let me just get the uh, webcam. Can everybody see the webcam? Okay. Just want to kind of share really quick. All right. Good. Everyone can see. All right. All right. Fine. Perfect. All right. Well, welcome everybody. And hopefully everybody was having a, a really good uh, experience with this whole coronavirus thing. But I'll tell you, there's no better place to be than in a webinar and learning how to trade today's volatile markets. Today has obviously has been a very, very fun market in today's uh, what's been happening. And I want to talk a little bit about today with short squeezes. I want to talk a little bit about how we trade today's volatile markets, um, you know, and tell you a little bit about myself and why every single one of you should be doing what we're doing today. So before we get started, I'd like to just get to know a little bit about everybody that's here that's logged into this webinar. Can everyone just give me a chat back and let me know what kind of traders everybody are you? A stock trader, a day trader, a swing trader, an options trader, a forex trader. Just want to get to kind of know a little bit about everyone that's here. Options, Nick, okay. Anyone else? Don't be shy. Anywhere. No, one's going to, no one's going to pick on you and make fun of you. Okay, Jeff, your futures. Okay, remember, um, don't know who your name is, but you're a day trader. Okay. Uh, what about you, Mike and Vicky and, and Lance? Options, okay, good, good, good. All right. So sorry, I don't understand. Oh, looks like my Google's sitting there trying to listen to my conversations. <laughs> All right. So we got John, you're a day trader. Okay, perfect. So let me tell you a little bit about what we're gonna learn. And uh basically, you know, we only have about 45 minutes. So I just want you guys to understand I can't teach you how to trade today's vol markets in 45 minutes, but what I can do is get you very, very interested. And I'm gonna invite every single one of you to come into the original online trading room that I started 25 years ago. So you're gonna to get to meet people just like you and see how they trade today's volatile markets. But before I do that, I wanna to explain to you what to expect because I don't wanna waste your time. You got some great presenters here and you know, and I think you, should, you need to listen to all of them, but let me just show you a little bit about what we do and how I do things a little bit different. So first of all, we're gonna talk about what is a short squeeze, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I've been noticing a ton of short squeezes. I'm going to show you who's actually controlling them, maybe even manipulating manipulating them by following the smart money, by using NASDAQ total view. I'm also going to talk about how these big orders get filled. You know, the big thing you have to understand is that you see a lot of things moving in the market. And let's be very honest. Why are you here? You're here to make money. That's about it. It's the only reason why you're here. It you shouldn't matter what you trade. It shouldn't matter what market you trade. You know what you should care about? What is going to give me the least amount of risk with the high amount of reward? Now, I know some of you like, you know, uh, uh, Nick and Mike and, you know, a couple of other people in here, uh, Naz, talking about trading options. Listen, I like options, but to be honest with you, you got to learn how to trade the stock first if you want to be in a good options trader because it's the movement of the stock that makes an option move. So you have to know how to trade today's markets. And remember, what are they talking about on all the financial stations every day? The stock market, the stock market, the stock market. So you know what? Why not learn a little bit about it? Because if it, because you might you might want to change. And let me put point this out really quick. Um, how long have you guys been trading for? When like when did you really take this very seriously? A couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, a couple of years ago, just out of curiosity, can everyone just tell me when did you started taking trading very, very seriously? All right, a couple of weeks, a couple of months, I see. Okay. Anyone else? Six months, last month, two years. Okay, a couple of years now. All right, so listen, I'm going to be very honest with you. If you're not making money within two to three months on what you're doing right now, you might want to change careers. Not, not as in like, you know, I mean, listen, if you're doing options for that long, you should be making money right now. If you're doing day trading, you should know right now. Maybe you found the wrong instructor, the wrong mentor, but if you're doing something, you made the time into it, maybe it's time for change. Listen, I kind of use the doctor theory. If a doctor puts you on medication, and you've been seeing them and you're not getting any better, chances are you should probably get a new doctor, <laughs> okay? You know, people are like, oh, no, no, it's still working. Listen, you hire a personal trainer and you don't see anything and you're spending all this money and things are not working out, 
you're not you're actually gaining weight or break or just not even seeing any improvements, maybe it's time to get a new trainer. You put a lot of time, a little effort into this, do it right. Now, I started the company just really quick. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because I want to get to the real fun stuff. But I started day trading about when I was 22 years old. I was semi-retired at the age of 24. But before I became a very good trader, I was also a very big successful loser. And how that happened is because I was one of those egotistical 20-year-olds that thought, I don't need to learn how to trade. What is someone going to teach me? And let me tell you, it's not as easy as people think it is. It's not as easy as hitting the buy and sell button. You got to know, you got to be able to, you know, understand how to play the game because trading, that's all it is, is a game. So um, eventually I, got, I took a job as a trader. I said, you know what? I didn't want to split the profits in the beginning, but you know what? Splitting is better than losing, right? And uh, I'll tell you what you're about to learn today is like the same thing that I went through 25 years ago. I should have never made my first trade. I didn't know that there was this whole market out there of to follow market makers. I mean, here you're looking at an image right now. Um, I'm an, actually a regular guest on NASDAQ. And I and they, you know, and one of the big things that ver NASDAQ was very impressed about is because I preach what they their platform runs on, NASDAQ total view. And it's amazing. Everybody wants to learn about, oh, what's your strategy? What's your indicator? It's all about following the money. That's really what it is. It's all about understanding how the market works. Now, that's realistically how I got started. And what I've learned is that if you want to be very successful, you have to surround yourself with successful traders. So not only, you know, you got to take the time to learn how to trade, but you also have to learn and work with those people that you trade with. That's what makes you a very, very good trader in today's markets. So. Just to let you know, here at Cybertrain University, I got two families. We got my family on the left, my beautiful wife, Debbie, with my three lovely sons, Alex, Max, and Lucas. And then you have my other second family that I trade with every day. The grandmas, the grandpas, the border controls, the cowboys, the engineers, you know, um, who else I got in there? Uh, uh, pharmacists, uh, doctors. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. These are the people I trade with every day. So I understand understand something. Um, what you what you might see different about Cyber Trade University is I'm not here to teach you about hey why I'm great and rah 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 you know I made so much money today. No, that's not uh, you know listen I'm at a different age. I rather see people's you know paying their kids college tuition, not going around bragging around what kind of car they drive or whatever it is. You know so the group of people that I I really focus on is more of a family oriented because we need to look out for each other when we trade. Now let's go right talk about some stocks that we traded. And I'm gonna show you exactly why they went up and why they went down to kind of prove to you why some of you are kind of trading backwards. Did anybody trade the stock IMRN? Anybody see the stock IMRN? It was like uh, last week it made this big pop. And by the way, this is in one day. Florentine, you didn't, you didn't see it? Anyone else? Great run up right here at the gate. If you see right here, I don't know if I have my, I just get my, uh, Thing up and running um so you can see right here the stock literally ran up and then it finally went went from like three dollars to about ten dollars and by the end of the, almost by the end of the day it ran to 30. no one traded could you imagine think about this for a second when's the last time you saw a stock go up i don't know 600 percent anybody ever see that 600 percent so why did it go up 600 percent where did fausta where did you find it you know or how about this stock you won Here's a stock that went from five in one day, which is even better. It ran all the way to 40. I mean, this is like something doesn't seem right. You know, like why did they go up so much? Well, who really cares? I mean, are we looking to make, you know, 35 points on a stock? No. But you know what? Some state traders, we're just looking to make a day's pay. Hell, if you just made a dollar on that stock on a thousand shares, you're talking a quarter million dollars, right? But you had all day to trade that stock, and that's what it's all about. CARV, another one, $5 to $20, all in one day. This is why people like day trading. They're like, damn, I mean, I never seen anything like this. You'll be shocked, ladies and gentlemen, fellow traders, but we do this every day. And, and don't take my word for it, because I'm going to invite all of you guys to come and see it. Now, we all talk about like, okay, you see the winners, and what about the losers, and why are they going up? Well, Apparently, there's a lot of big short squeeze going on. Now, does anybody know what a short squeeze is? 
Anybody know what short squeeze stands for? Just give me a yes or no. Okay, we got one yes, two yeses. So everybody knows. Okay, we got a couple of no's. Okay, Florentine, you know. Nick, you know. Savannah, you don't know. So a short squeeze, not really. Okay, so a short squeeze is what, what happens is that people are want the stock to go down. So they they it's like an option. It's like a, it's like putting a it's like doing a put. Um it's actually, I would call it the original option, okay, shorting. So what happens is shorting, it's not going down. So they're, what they're doing is they're buying it back, and then they're doubling, shorting more, and then it's not going down. So they're buying it back, running it up, and then they're, they're, they're quadrupling and, and keep shorting it higher. They keep doubling and tripling and quadrupling down, but they keep running the stock up because it's not going lower. That's a short squeeze, and that's why a lot of these stocks are going up. Now, how does that affect us? What affects us is that we just follow the trend. There are people trading millions and millions of shares of the stock, and we want to just trade with them. Now, how do we find them? We just work off our big percentage gainers and losers. So I don't have a crystal ball, okay? That's completely, you know, uh, you know, fake. Nobody has a crystal ball. I just work off my big percentage gainers and losers. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't know what these companies do. I don't want to know what they do. I don't want to get complicated what they do. I just want to you know, live a better life, pay for my kids' college, pay my bills. My wife doesn't ask me, oh, why did you trade Blue Apron today? You know, oh, why did you trade, um, you know, IMRN today? Well, what is that? They don't get, that's none of their business. They don't care. All they care about, do you love your job? Are you doing well with it? And everybody knows it's a great job. But how do you find them? It's right through the big percentage gainers and losers. Now, what I do, just to let you guys know, um, I do a live broadcast every morning and the afternoon on YouTube Live and Facebook Live. So if you have not liked us so far and haven't watched us, um, which which is be which is better, I'm going to invite you to the trading room. So that would be better. But if you haven't seen our videos, I have a whole full library, hundreds of videos, um, very short videos to kind of talk a lot about this stuff too. All right. So anyway, um, like Blue Apron, look at eight dollars to twenty. <laughs> it's just like it's ridiculous. Now that now you've seen what's happening here, how it went from 28 down to 10. That's what's called a short squeeze. So who's running it up? Who's running it down? That's what we need to learn. Okay. Just like you you won. Stock goes from five to 40, back down to, to 10. Um CRAV, four to 22, back down to eight. These are all short squeezes. Okay. Okay, so what is my strategy? Basically, we need to know where the buyers are and where the sellers are. That is really the ultimate goal. And by not knowing that is what why 90% of traders fail in today's markets. You see, my job as a trader, you know, and you know, I, I teach people like to so I could trade with them, but 90% of the people fail. So I found out a theory is I don't teach people how to make money, I teach them how to stop losing it. You know, really think about it. If everybody's doing well, what do you need training for, right? It's like, I'm doing good. Well, I mean, unless you want to get better. And if you're great traders, never stop learning. But at the end of the day, most people are failing. And the realistic, realistic thing is you got to know how to stop losing money before you can start learning how to make money. So we don't really need to know the news. We really don't need to know the volume. But what we do need to know is how to use uh, today's today's tools to trade. Now, um, I want to talk something about called level three, okay? Now, there's a couple of levels that when you do a trade, level one, level two, and level three. So level one basically tells you where the buyers and sellers are. It doesn't really tell you anything other than what the exact price the stock is trading at this moment. It doesn't tell you who's buying it, who's selling it. Then there was something called NASDAQ level two. Now, this thing has been outdated since the 90s, okay? I don't know why anybody even uses it. But people are like, oh, I got level two. What the hell is level? Level two doesn't tell you anything. Back in the old days, you were able to monitor brokerage firms. Now all it is is just ECN orders, which we call electronic communication network, if you don't know what that means. NASDAQ, EDGX, Archipelago, uh, Philadelphia Exchange. I mean, these are all exchanges. So, but who's behind that exchange? And how many orders are behind that exchange? You can't see it. So there is something that we use um, that's called NASDAQ Total View. Now, does anybody know what NASDAQ Total View is? 
Now, this is only one of the ECNs out there. So I'm going to show you one of several of them out there, but this is really one of the most popular one. Does anybody know what total view is? I call it level three. Okay, we got to know. Anybody else? Okay, let me let me tell you this. What you're about to see right here is going to be extremely disturbing because you're going to realize that you've been trading blind your whole time. Now, this is really going to change every perspective of the way you look and trade. So please listen to me carefully. And if you have any questions, you know, I'll try to answer as best as I can because I'm, I'm a little short for time here. So what I'm about to show you, I'm going to teach you something in 15 minutes that you probably couldn't learn in 15 years. Okay. Just this one thing. Now, we all know who has it, who doesn't. Most people don't have it. Now, remember, please, I don't work for NASDAQ. I don't work for brokerage firms. I don't work for anybody. We are, we are a private firm. And all we do is we do education and we trade with our traders. But what I'm about to show you is what all us market makers use. Because remember, I was a market maker. I used to trade. I used to be those guys used to compete against. Now, let me, uh, do I have my pointer here? Hold on. Yeah, let me get my pointer so you guys can follow along. Okay, so everybody see this right here? Everybody see my pointer? Okay, so right here, these are your buy orders and these are your sell orders. So remember, you got buyers and you got sellers, right? So what you're seeing right now is every single order at every single price of people trying to trade Snapchat. Let me repeat that. Listen to me carefully. I don't know if this really sunk in in your head. You are seeing every single order that is trading on the NASDAQ exchange, who wants to buy it and how many orders are out there and at what price. So now, you, now you're starting to realize like, wow, now you really could see every order. That's right, every single one of them that are out there. So how do we use this data? So I assume everybody here knows how to read a chart. Okay, so we're gonna implement a chart and we're looking at IQ, okay? So in IQ here, you could see how the stock went from $24.20, dropped all the way down to 23, went back up to 23.40, came back down to 23, and went right back up to 23.40. Why did it stop at 23? Why didn't it go to 22? Why couldn't it stop at 20, uh, 23.50? Why 23? Where did that number come from? Some people, oh, it's a whole number. Some people are like, oh, uh, um, it was a you know a double bot. No. Listen, you could you could use whatever anybody tells you. I'll tell you exactly what, what it was. There was a 96,000 share buyer, 77 different people around the world make up that 96,000 shares at $23. So you could sit there and analyze all you want, but you are looking at the raw data from the NASDAQ exchange. Imagine you are in the New York Stock Exchange. You know that big boardroom? Imagine you're seeing a bunch of people and they all are flashing, I'm a buyer at $23, which you can't see unless you had a CD on exchange, but now you do. Now you could see all the see orders. Everything is transparent. Everything here is all, all transparent. Now you're seeing the true orders out there. So when you're wondering why is a stock not breaking a support level is because of that guy. So, uh, do you provide level three quotes? Uh, my platform does not offer this. Okay, so like I told you, no, we don't. I do not offer any of this platform, okay? This is NASDAQ's platform. I am just, you know, I am just, a, a, you know, a, an educator and a trader. And I'm just showing you what you guys are doing wrong, okay? But if you want to learn this in more detail, I'll show you where to get it. Bottom line is you can get it right through NASDAQ's website. NASDAQ allows anybody to buy their, you know, have a seat on the exchange. You don't got to come up with millions of dollars to buy a seat. That's where people make this mistake. Now let's look at DraftKings right here. So DraftKings, you could see right here, went from $38.50 all the way up to $42 in about, what, about two, three hours. And you see how it hovered there for about maybe an hour. It never wanted to break $42, okay? And then you know what? Eventually, if you didn't get out, it went all the way back down to 4050. So think about how many times have you bought a stock? You're like, damn it, I should have sold that damn stock. What wh why didn't why did I get greedy? Well, you know what? If you knew that there was a 55,000 shares 
of 49 different people in the world out there at 42, you probably would have got out too. But you're not seeing that. Because I'll tell you this, the 300 share seller at 4150 doesn't scare me. The 500 share seller at 4167 doesn't scare me. But this guy right here, 55,000, that guy gets me nervous. That's what actually makes the stock go down. Now, is anybody confused yet? Anybody? Did I lose anybody? Anybody lost? Just give me a yes or no. Okay, we got one no, 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 no. Now think about this. Every single one of you are saying no right now. This is first grade stuff. And a lot of people are not even using it. Imagine if you knew and how to apply this to your trades. Think about this for a second. How many times have you done a trade and every time you buy it, the thing goes down. And then every time you sell it, it goes up. And you're sitting there trying to realize, you think like somebody's like watching you. Anybody experience that? You know why? They're not watching you. You are not watching them. That is your problem. And that's what I learned. I'm like, wow, it really does make sense. Okay. Twitter. Can everybody tell me, is the stock going up or going down? Uh, question, what is the monthly cost for total view? You want to fall off your share, your chair? When I started trading, it was $1,000 a month. You know what it is today? $15 a month. 15 lousy six thinking dollars. And how about this? It's even cheaper. It's going to be $9 when, when we're done with today's, uh, today, when I'm done today. Think about that. Why would you not spend nine lousy stinking dollars to do that i have no idea even if you could say well i don't trade the stock market well what worst thing can happen to you remember what i told you before you guys signed in because i know more people are signing in right now if you've been doing this for more than two three months forex futures options and you're not making money you maybe should could change a different career in the trading industry maybe you should try day trading by the way you could use this sort of swing trading and options trading also now twitter is this stock going up or going down? Let me get back to, because I remember, I'm running, I don't have too much time here. I'm going to give you guys some time to, um, um, for the next presenter, because I, I have another big speaking arrangement right after this one, too. Is this stock going up or going down? If you cannot answer this question, I highly recommend you should quit trading and log out right now. This is the easiest question that anyone could ask any of you active traders in this market. Is this stock going up or down? Look at that trend. Please, everybody, chat in the chat room. I don't know why mo I don't know why so many people are scared. Val, what about you? William, Michael, I'm looking at your names right here. Steven, Polo, what are you guys scared of? Is it going up or going down? Just be honest. Listen, don't don't be offensive. I'm very straightforward. I hate seeing people lose money, but when you do a trade, you should know right away where that direction of stock is going. All right. Everybody's saying it's going down. Okay, congratulations. You are absolutely correct. Okay, absolutely correct. Fabulous. Now, this is the $64,000 question. What is going to make this stock go up? How is this stock going to, when, is this stock going to zero? No, it's not going to zero, right? What is going to make this stock go up? Buyers. There you go. Look at that. Do you see buyers on the chart? But everyone loves a chart. I don't see any buyers on there. Oh, maybe I look at back in, uh, I got to go back and look in history. How many times have you looked at a chart in history and it still broke support levels? Okay. What you do need to see is this guy. This guy right here, when we're looking at total view, we look at $30.63. There is a 95,000 share buyer made of 36 people around the uh, complete world not the United States, the whole world that are trading at that price. So in theory, why would I want to question that guy? Why would I even want to think that the stock's going to go to zero? You know what? It could happen, but it's got to get through that guy first, okay? And guess what? If you didn't and you weren't prepared, the stock went from 30, right there, literally right the number where you thought it was going down, but now that when you saw the order, guess what?
the stock went right back up to 31. Now, if you bought, if you bought it at 30.65 and you sold it at 31, give or take, was that 40 cents, 35 cents, thousand shares in a matter of 30 minutes? I don't know, 300 bucks, 50, 60 thousand dollars salary. Who doesn't want that job? Who doesn't want to buy that job? Okay. You see, the goal is this, and is exactly what one of you just mentioned earlier. It's not about what happened in the past. It's what's indicative of the future. That's how you become a very good trader. All right, Uber, up or down? What do you guys think, up or down? Really quick, up or down? Up, 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 great. Everyone's up, great. Congratulations, you're right. What do we need, now when will the stock stop? Because we know things will go up in a straight line. What do we need for the stock to go down? When will the stock stop? We need to see sellers. Okay. Go back here, NASDAQ book viewer. Look at, I mean, look at this. This is like almost like taking candy from a little kid. I mean, I don't think anyone could be confused about this. Two shares, 100 shares, 1,500. Uh, one share, oof, one share at this guy, one share at $35.83. Why would he even waste his time? I don't know, but you know what? He's there. But this guy, 88,000, 88 orders out there making 96,000 shares at 36. That's a number I'll be focused on. That is what we call here at Cyber Trade University an iceberg order. And guess what? What do you think is going to happen when the stock is going to hit there? Exactly what we thought what we knew it was going to do. It went straight down. And if you didn't have a game plan, the stock's at 36, now went down to 35.20. You just threw away 80 cents in the stock. For what reason? Because somebody on TV was talking about it. Because you went on Uber and you're like, oh, I love Uber. It's a great company. I used it today. No, has nothing to do. When you finally emotionally and mentally start, you know, thinking you know more than the market, that's when you're going to lose. Okay? It's not what you think. It's having the right tools. That's how you succeed when it comes to traders. Okay? Now, a lot of people always ask me, they're like, you know, Fausto, um, I heard about these orders, you know, I heard that, uh, could they be fake? Listen, there's nothing fake about these orders. By the way, if you ever find a brokerage firm that lets you put fake orders in the market, please let me know, because um, I'll, be I'll, I'll, be, I'll be more wealthier than, uh, than, uh, than any, any trader in the industry. They're all real, okay? So don't ever think they're fake. Now, can somebody cancel? Of course they could cancel an order, okay? Let's look over here, we're looking at Rite Aid, okay? So Rite Aid, if you notice right here, there's a buyer of $15, 86,000 shares. So in theory, that's definitely a support level, right? Well, if you notice right here, the stock went down to $14. What ever happened to the buyer at, at 15? Well, if you look over here in the time and sales, do you notice what happened? Look at all these orders, 4,400. 1,000, 2,800, 1,900, 1,300, 3,000, 30. The, the guy got executed. Somebody was selling it. A lot of people were dumping it at that price. That guy got executed. That's why the stock went down. Not because of Mr. Fibonacci said so. Not because of 200 moving average said so. It's because that big order right there just got executed. Okay. Now, Vicky said, could, what happens if somebody cancels? You could cancel an order. Do you get in trouble canceling an order with your brokerage firm? But you know what? How we know he got canceled is by looking at the time in sales. How many of you guys knew that? How many of you guys know that the time in sales is what controls the chart? How many of you guys knew that the time in sales is what, uh, what gives you the, the, it shows you the executions of transactions that are happening? I hear crickets. I hear crickets, you know, and that's okay. That's okay. Just remember, Vicky and Karen and Bruce and all you guys, Jack, just got to ask yourself a question. Who really trained you? Because before I knew this stuff, I was just an ignorant 22-year-old kid. Now I'm going to be 49 next month, you know, and uh, it doesn't, you know, I've been doing it ever since. And I've learned something new every time. But I can tell you this, nothing has changed in 25 years since I started. The only thing that's happened is ticket charges got cheap. You don't gotta be licensed to do this anymore because I had to be licensed back then. You had to work for a brokerage firm. Now you have the freedom to do it now. What, what's better than that? 
So, um, <laughs> well, thank you very much, Kathy. You wish me a happy birthday. I'm getting close to that 50, and I'm, like, really freaking out, okay? All right, so anyway, uh, now, Fausto, do you use indicators? Well, listen, I don't really, when you look at this, what's easier to read? The chart on the left or the chart on the right? The left one, I mean, it's got a lot of cool stuff. It's got an RSI, CCI. It's got a, what's it got? It's got a moving average. It's got price candlesticks, momentum. The right, right? I mean, this looks like a bunch of spaghetti to me. Now, I'm not knocking indicators. You can use indicators, but it does not work for day trading. It does not work for day trading. You have to learn how to keep things simple. When I first walked into a boardroom and I learned how to trade, people were like, okay, I'm looking forward. I read all these books. I want to know if it's going to be candlesticks. And the guy's like, and I'm waiting for the day. He's like, when are we going to talk about charts? Oh, that's last. And I'm like, really? Okay. So then when, when I was done with my trading program, I'm like, okay, guys, you ready to trade? I'm like, are we going to go over indicators? And like, what do you need an indicator for? They're like, oh, I thought that's how you're supposed to trade. They're like, they're like, no. You know, when, what we do here, we do not use indicators. They're laggers. They're not leaders. And you figure it out. And it makes perfect sense. Who would you rather monitor? The broker, the orders, or an indicator? Remember, do you want to be a lagger or you want to be a leader? So that's where that comes in. So, um, by the way, anybody lost? Anybody confused? Think about this for a second. We've talked for less than 30 minutes. 30 minutes. I just showed you one of Wall Street's biggest secrets. And you know what people always come and ask me? They says, Fausto, I don't understand. This is sometimes the first time I ever heard it. I know some of you feel the same way. They're like, why do more people don't talk about it? Well, I said, listen, I can't answer for them. But what I always tell everybody is like, well, who did they work for? Were they, were they a market maker like I was? Did they work on the floor of the exchange like I was? Or is it somebody just decided, you know, like, remember, unfortunately, there's a like, Anna is a, doing a very good job with the Investor Expo. And she does her homework and she knows how to, to, to separate from people that are marketers because unfortunately, you know, in the education business, I don't, I don't want to knock myself down in my industry, but it's like, the, it's like colleges. They're all out. A lot of these colleges are for profit, not for non for profit. You know what I mean? And, you know, you want people that I'm a type of person where I'm looking to train people I could trade with so I can make a lot of money with. That's really what I do, you know, but if you get it, let me mentor you how to do it and let me show it to you, which I'm going to show all of you how to come and join me in my trading room. You know, and trust me, don't judge me on my winners. Judge us on our losers and not, my, not, not me, my students that were just like you. A couple of questions coming across here. Uh, Gordon has a question. How do you know what the significant order size of a given security? Uh, and do you look for big orders on the other side to get out when it take a profit? Well, Gordon, listen, you can't be in, you can't analyze a stock. You just got to follow the money. If they're buying, that's where you buy. Where they're selling, you want to sell where there is. If you want to get greedy and cocky, that's your choice. But you know what? More to nine to, out of 10 times, you'll probably end up losing than gaining. All right. And the only way you learn that is by trading. Uh, Val says it makes a lot of sense. Val, what, I, you know what? You're welcome. But I'm just telling you, to be honest with you, I went through this whole thing too. Uh, question, uh, level two, uh, what does it not show you? I don't understand is because it keeps changing the orders. Level two is only showing you the best buyer and the best seller. It's not showing you all the buyers and all the sellers. You're getting over 20 to 50 times more data trading on a level three than on a level two. That's the big difference. And I will show you that live in my trading room. Okay. Now. I know that a lot of you here, you know, deal with the coronavirus and, you know, maybe out of work. Um, now everybody's starting to work from home. Like, I always get people like, I wish I could trade Fausto, but I can't because I work, you know, they won't let me in my office and I, and I got to do it. Well, guess what? How many of you guys are working from home right now? How many of you guys don't even know if you're going to have a job when you go back? How many of you here, you know, who, by the way, I don't know where you all from, but New York City is not safe. Is not safe at all. I was just there the other day. It looks like the it looks like the 80s. Okay. I'm seeing people getting beat up. Buildings are empty. Corporations are gonna let people, you know what? They're figuring it out. Forget about the crime, but it's cheaper for them to work from home. 
So why not do that? And, and first of all, who wants to really take orders? How about just trading the market? I mean, you saw the Dow Jones drop to 18,000. Where are we today? We're almost at 27,000. We literally went up 9,000 points. How many of you guys like, how'd you know it was going up? You know what? This business pays a lot of money. Why not get involved and surround yourself with good traders and get in this industry? That's what it's all about. So you could spend more time with your family. You could do the things you always want to enjoy in life, you know? But you have to know how to, you have to surround yourself not only with a good mentor, but a good trainer. And let me just tell you right now, Cyber Train University has been featured and has been sponsored uh, and endorsed by more brokerage firms, more exchanges than anyone in the industry. And we're very proud of it. Listen, we have a reputation. We're very big with customer service, but we're also in the business to make money with our traders. These brokerage firms cannot give you education because it's a compliance issue. So they want to send you somebody that really knows what they're doing. And by the way, that's one of the biggest things that should sell you whenever you get a mentor. If they're being endorsed by big broker terms, trust me, these guys do credit checks on us, background checks, criminal checks, everything. You think they want us to talk to their staff, their, 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 their students, if we're, if we're criminals or uh, you know, we're teaching people how to lose money? Trust me, these are the people you want to, want to follow. So we're very proud to kind of promote that. So anyway, this is what I'm looking to do. So I got a little less than 10 minutes to finish up because I want to give you guys some time to come and register for tomorrow. Enjoy my trading room. But um, every one of you are going to have access to my original trading room. I want to teach all of you to, to practice what I preach. Okay. Listen, I'm just telling you right now, we don't tell anybody what to buy and sell. First of all, it's, it's illegal to do that. All right. So if you're looking for somebody to tell you what to buy and sell, we're not the right fit. If you're looking for somebody to give you stock picks, we're not the right fit. But if you want someone that's going to teach you how to think for yourself, if, you, if you're somebody who wants to learn how to trade with someone else, then I want you to come in our trading room and see what other people are doing. That's how you learn. And by the way, question came across here. We only trade an hour a day. Why am I doing this webinar right now? I, I, I was done at 1030 this morning. About you know Eastern time, obviously, it's not a full time job, which is even better. The first hour and the last hour are actually the best. Um, now, this is all I'm asking for is a nine dollar promotion. Okay, the reason why we charge nine dollars, we want to make sure that we know who you are and you're a real person. We don't know who you are, we know where you come from, whatever it is. But and by the way, after if you're not happy what you see in our trading room for a week, I'll give you nine dollars back. Trust me, I don't need your nine dollars. <laughs> All right, but I want to make sure and interest you because some of you are forex traders, option traders, like eh, I want to I want to make this work. I like the leverage. Well, you know what? You might like this better, and this is what you're gonna get: access to our live online uh, trading room, three daily market meetings, a morning and afternoon watch list, a personal education advisor, weekly Q and A sessions a crash course on day trading. And as a bonus for the first 20 people to register, I will actually give you a coaching class. Now, people always ask me like, Fausto, what, why, why does Fausto want to talk to me? Well, listen, a lot of you really don't qualify to be a trader. Okay. And you know what? I'm not going to train you if I, if I don't think I'm going to be able to make money with you. And I'd rather be very straightforward with you. A lot of these other people will just throw you in their room and charge you a subscription and do that. We're not that we're not like that way. Listen, if I want to have two, three thousand people in my room, I would do it. I only focus about having between 100 and 200 traders. So if you want to see what it's about, we're going to invite you in there. So this is all you have to do. Uh, Anna actually put the promotion link up there. And uh, just click on that link and register. And then, like I said, the worst thing that could happen is you find out that this is not for you. Now, let me kind of answer a couple of questions why people are uh, asking, uh, do S&P have something like this? Uh, S&P has something like BookView. You can see the S&P futures on, on uh, BookView, but the thing is this, why do you want to compete against the best traders on Wall Street? There were stocks out there we traded today that would just blow, that was so much easier to trade than the S&P 500. Once again, come to my trading room, I'll show it to you. Um, uh, do you use the select uh, potential traders? Um, Earlier you showed a net, percent gain in losers. Uh, well, Jeff, regarding about the net percentage gain of losers, we want to trade stocks that have very big action in it. And that's why we trade those stocks. Okay. 
Remember, I don't care what I trade. I just want to risk the least amount of money as possible with the high amount of reward. And to answer your other question, I do not trade penny stocks. Okay. I have nothing against them. I'm not prejudiced against them. It's just that you don't get, you won't be able to see the data from the orders out there from market makers. That's why. Okay. Uh, is there a rec recording somewhere to take it through the complete trading? Well, let me tell you something, uh, uh, Kathy. Everything that you want is right here in front of you. Come and see if other traders, how they do it. Watch the videos, go from there. A lot of it we do have on YouTube. If you subscribe to our channel, you can watch it and go from there. All right. But um, but you guys got the link. Hopefully everybody could join me. And uh, listen, remember, you can't activate your trade, get in the room until you actually talk to an education advisor. We just got to make sure you know exactly what's going on and so on. But if you want to know the real truth about day trading, if you want to know why I was a 12-time world champion, why we're endorsed by most brokerage firms, any school in the industry, come and check it out. And then, and then let's make a judgment after that and see if trading's for you. The worst thing, like I said, the worst thing that could happen to you do is you find out it's not for you. And what, do you, and what is it risking you? $9. And if you want your money back at the end of the week, you could have it. I just want to make sure you guys know what you're doing. So with that said, Anna, thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, be the first presenter here. Always, it's always nice to be the first one. But you got two more that are coming up that are just as good. Listen to these presenters. Focus on what they talk about. You got no place else to go. Why not go out there and learn how to trade the market? Why go back to work? We're dealing with a big pandemic. Honestly, I think this is going to be around for the next year. So why not start profiting from it than sitting there and waiting for the next stimulus check? You know what I mean? Let, let somebody else deal with it. Let's do this and you know make our own money and do something we enjoy for the rest of our lives. So thank you very much for having me, guys. Good luck. Enjoy the rest of your presentation. And uh, look forward to seeing you all in the trading room. Uh, Steve Quitzel with thetradersplan.com. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart. This is a strategy that I've been working on for years. I've been trading for years successfully. How to time the, bottoms, how to time the bottom in stocks. Uh, so my big promise to you is by the end of this training, you're going to have a serious trading advantage over the majority of traders. Now, I know for, the, for an absolute fact that the three rules I'm going to show you uh, combined with 20 minutes a week makes you a successful trader. This is a complete rules-based approach. It's not based on gut feel. This is a system, so you have to follow the rules. But luckily for me, I get to see traders putting it into action on a daily basis. So real quick, I got to make the lawyers happy, so I'm going to let you read this disclosure. Okay, excellent. Lawyers happy. All right. So I want to make sure you're in the right place. This training, this training is for you if you need an actionable plan to pull weekly retirement income from your trading. Or maybe you have been consistently losing money in the markets, even in the bull markets, right? And that's, that's honestly very common for a lot of new to intermediate traders. They come in, they're still losing money even though the market's going up. Uh, or maybe you are a 50 to 60, you really, really want to retire early. Uh, or in addition, you just cannot afford to lose any money from trading anymore. Like you're ready to put a trade plan in place. You're ready to follow a rule set approach. If that sounds like you, you're in the right place. Now, a little bit about me, just so you know uh, who is on the other end of the screen. Uh, I am a former financial advisor turned trader and publisher back in 2013. I worked in a practice uh, where I managed 60 million assets under management. I am the author of Expert Trading Systems books, which you can buy on Amazon, and I'm the head publisher and founder of thetradersplan.com. Okay, so what makes this easy? What makes this strategy that I'm about to teach you easy? For one, there's zero fundamental analysis involved, just price and volume. So you don't have to go, you know, reading the news wires, coming through, trying to find all these catalysts, catalysts. Uh, this is just techn a technical approach based on price and volume. Now, there are only three rules to this system, and you can literally write it on a post-it note. So I recommend you taking notes, literally write it on a post-it note and stick it to your computer screen 
until you get this down and can really trade it for yourself. Only takes 20 minutes per week, right? Every weekend, you know, I spend 15 minutes going through my scans. I find the top two or three setups, place my order uh, every market, every Monday morning, right? So it's, it's literally very easy. It's designed, uh, you know, and I like to say, once you place your order on Monday, go fishing. And we're going to talk about that here in a minute. I like to go fishing. So this is not for you. I also want to be respectful of your time if, if this isn't for you. Um, you know, if you cannot follow a rules-based approach and are always going off your gut, right? You're always, you know, saying, well, the market should be doing this. And even though it's going the other way, I'm still going to follow my gut, right? I'm going to teach you a, a trade plan, a rules-based approach. Uh, maybe you love the long shot gamble approach more than the ROI. Now, what does that mean? You still get super excited every time you hit the buy button and you haven't mentally made the shift that trading is a business and you need to treat it as such, right? Uh, or maybe you can't come to terms with the fact that the market knows more than you. And this kind of goes back to, and I always say the market is always right, as a lot of professional traders do. And this kind of goes back to the first point, follow your gut, right? The market, everything you need to know is on the charts. Right, the market knows best, and it's just best not to argue with it. So I just want to make sure uh, none of these sound like you. Okay, so uh, once per week setup. Let me just kind of grab this over here. Okay, so when studying the bottom in stocks, I noticed that there are certain qualities all stocks have before they turn into their winning trades. In order to identify these money-making setups, we must recognize these qualities before they make their big move. Right. So luckily for you, I have narrowed down these qualities down to a rules based winning system that I've been trading and perfecting for about three to four years now. OK. And I'm going to teach you that system today. OK. So how to set this up? I'm going to go big picture before we really, really dive deep into the rules. OK. So big picture. So every Saturday or Sunday morning, I spend 15 minutes going through my scan to find the best setups. Right. Monday morning, one minute before the market opens, you place your market order. Okay, it's just that easy. You got your best candidate, you place your market order, and then just rinse and repeat, right? Set your alarm on your cell phone for every Monday to make sure that you do not forget to place that market order right at the open. And then just repeat, okay? So very, very easy. What I'm going to talk about today is called the weekly reversal pattern, right? A, a very easy to identify visually on the chart. And, um, you know, we're going to walk through, I believe, four or five examples because I want I want to help you kind of train your eyes so you can visually see this over and over. Now, this is just an example. This is Eversource Energy. Um, this is the signal bar that we want to identify. OK, it is a signal bar from a downtrend that all of a sudden reverses and goes the other way. So this would be the signal bar right here now. I know and am very aware that not every signal bar of this pattern is going to go on to double, right? You know that, I know that, but I'm also going to show you some examples here in a minute of real live trades that they have done incredibly, incredibly well. And if you can really identify these, this bottoming pattern, you can make a lot of money over throughout the year. You're going to do very, very well. So you can see it right here. Now, this is a weekly chart. I want to be crystal clear. This reversal pattern is a weekly reversal pattern. I do not do daily reversal patterns. You have too many whipsaws. Uh, this is a weekly reversal pattern. So I show you this chart. If, if you look at a chart, any chart, just pick a stock and look at the weekly chart and go back a couple of years, you're going to see at the swing low points, this pop up over and over and over again. Okay. So let's get right into it. Here are the rules. This is Amazon. This is a real live alert. I do own this, so full disclosure, I'm not telling you to go out and buy it, but I, I, I think it's very, very important for you to see this uh, from real life setups. Okay, so this is the rules right here. This is it. I told you you could put this on a post-it note, so you want to write this down. Now would definitely be the time to shut off any background noise, distractions, cell phone. You're going to miss this if you're not writing this stuff down and paying attention. Okay. So this is the weekly reversal pattern. Here are the three rules. Now I'm gonna walk through the three rules once, and then I'm gonna walk through them again to kind of explain the psychology, why this system works so well. Uh, so we have a, a signal bar, right? A weekly reversal pattern right here. Let's walk through the rules. 
Rule number one, weekly chart must undercut the prior three weeks, right? So that means the low of this signal bar must undercut the low of the previous three weeks. One, two, three, it clearly does that check, right? That's easy enough. Rule number two, chart must close above prior week's close, right? And how do we tell that? Is the bar green? If you use red and green bars or candles, rule number two is fulfilled as, as long as the bar is green. It doesn't have to be above the previous week's high or the previous three weeks high. It just has to close positive, meaning it closed above the previous week's close, right? So rule number two, just looking for a green bar. Rule number three, must have above average volume. Look at this volume bar right here. This is, uh, looks like the biggest or the second biggest uh, volume bar in Amazon over the last two years. And that's saying something considering, uh, you know, the, the, the price per share at this point where we got in was around 1885. Uh, that is hundreds of millions of dollars piling into the Amazon stock all at once, right? That is the smart money, the institutions, the hedge funds, the pensions, these guys are stepping in to either initiate a position or support their stock. Okay, so that's the three rules and then we enter on Monday, okay? So let's walk through these three rules again and I'll really walk through the psychology of this and why this works so well. And you can see that it happened again right here. You can see that it happened again right here. Uh, and I think this, it happened again right here. This one was a failure, so three out of four. Uh, but this one was the big winner. So let's walk through this weekly rule number one, weekly chart must undercut prior three weeks. Why do I do that? What is the psychology behind that? Well, it's very simple. Have you ever had your stop picked off and then the market turns around and takes off without you? Happens all the time, right? If you've taken enough trades, that happens all the time. So what I'm looking for is a nice, called a shakeout, a nice shakeout, run all the stops of the previous three weeks Okay, because I'm looking to, I want this pattern, these institutions are stepping in and they're getting rid of the weak holders, the retail investors like you and I, they're shaking us out, okay? So rule number two, must close above prior week's close. So why do I have that rule? Well, I want there to be enough reversal support for it to at least close positive, because if it doesn't close positive, it's not a reversal and it's still in a downtrend, okay? So when it comes down here, I want there to be enough support to give me enough confidence to take the trade. Now, rule number three. Now, all three rules have to be in place, uh, but you'll find them on any chart. Rule number three, must have above average volume. Let me explain this, right? We talked about the smart money, the pensions. You know, this is not you, me, your grandmother up the street, you know, putting this kind of volume into this kind of stock. It's the smart money. Now, the beautiful thing about mutual funds is on average, it can take a mutual fund three to five months to complete a position because they can't buy it all at once or else they'll move the market. So they're going to continue to add on and add on and add on and add on all the way up. And we're not talking about small positions, but as retail investors, we have the flexibility to one, ride their coattail and two, get in and out as quickly and as often as we like. So really what we're doing is we're waiting on that we're, those institutions to step in and support their stock. And we're, we're riding it out with them as long as we possibly can. We have trend following rules. And I'm going to talk about that here in a second. So this is one we still own, right? And it's doing incredibly well. We got in right here around 1885 after the week of the reversal. So to be clear, this signal bar, this reversal pattern, it is a end of week close. You cannot, uh, you know, buy it on Friday or buy it on Thursday. You have to make sure the volume stays above average throughout the whole week, and then we buy it the following Monday, right? Uh, because there have been plenty of times where people would try to front run signals, jump the gun, and then it didn't end up being a valid hand, uh, pattern. Maybe the volume dropped off at the end of the day on Friday. Uh, but let's look at this right here. This is a great setup right here, clear as day. You can see the signal bar, rule number one, the low, the 1672, undercut the previous three weeks. It Check. Rule number two, closed above the previous week. The bar is green. It's that simple. Check. Above average volume. Now, this is not a huge skyscraping volume like this one, but um, there's not a ton of distribution around it either, okay? 
And so when I see this, even though it just has to be slightly above average volume, as long as there's not a, a lot of selling right in front of it, which there's really not, I'll go ahead and consider it valid, which it is. It fulfills all the rules. Now, this volume only has to be above average. It doesn't have to be above the previous week's volume, okay? Um, to identify what I identify as above average, I just plot a 50-day moving average on this volume chart. Right? Just very simple, right? If the volume bar is above the 50-day moving average, it's above average, right? Clear as day. So let's look at this signal right here. You got another one, right? And these, the, again, if you start to visually be looking out for these, they're going to pop up again and again and again. So let's look at one right here. Okay. Um, it under this 1307 undercut the previous three weeks. Check. Close above the previous week. Rule number two. The bar is green. Check. And above average volume. Okay. Fulfilled all the rules. Entered on Monday. Nice little swing trade. Okay. Now, this one right here uh, is also a weekly re reversal pattern. It fulfills all the rules and it failed, okay? So right here, you can see that it fulfilled all three rules, above average volume, reversal, and uh, closed green. You bought it open on Monday, and then it tried to go up a little bit and it rolled back over to undercut this. So this, this was a failure, so three out of four on this chart. This is just on this chart, worked really, really well, okay? And this uh, signal bar right here, this was also the bottom in the overall market, right? This is the coronavirus sell-off right here. And a lot of times when you look for these reversals, you can look for them in the overall market, but some of the leaders, they will reverse sometimes a week or two before the market bottoms. Didn't happen in this case, but again, those are the leaders, right? So this was a clear leader. It has clearly been a leader outperformed the overall market since this rally and is at all-time highs. Very, very bullish stock. Let's look at another example, right? And I like to look at a lot of different examples because not all just shoot up like a rocket, right? Like Amazon or Eversource, right? Sometimes they're just nice little swing trades. So here is KB Home, um, and you can see right here that it has a nice weekly reversal pattern. So you can see that there was a pullback, and then all of a sudden it reversed at the 40-week moving average. See the 40-week EMA, right? It reversed. So what happened right here is it tried to close below a key support line, a key trend line, and institutions stepped in and bought more or added on and supported their stock and then reversed above it. When you have a signal bar that tries to close below support, but by the end of the week reverses higher and above average volume, that's double bullish in my opinion. These are the kind of setups that I'm really, really uh, going to pick over maybe some setups I find way down here that the stocks are in a downtrend, right? Because you're within an uptrend, pullback, reversal, bullish. So all three rules are fulfilled. You can see them. Um, and then it, it entered at the open on Monday. And then we had a nice little trend, okay? So you, our rules, I'm going to go over the money management money management rules here in a second, the exit strategy. Um, but right here, we sold half at 8%. And then we sold the remaining half. And then we let the other half ride because we don't know if it's going to hit 8% and roll over. We don't know if it's going to hit 8% and keep going, right? We want to book partial profits so we can be playing with house money. And then we're going to ride it until it breaks the 50-day moving average, which is also the 10-week. So then we just trailed behind that and we sold right here. So we sold a little bit at 8%. Sold a little bit at, uh, it's probably like between 15 and 20%. So we netted out somewhere in the middle. Okay. And this was a solid trade. Now, did this is a trend, this is a true trend following exit strategy. Did we get out at the exact top? No, we didn't. But look what happened, obviously, with the coronavirus sell off. So in hindsight, this actually wasn't looking at that bad of an exit. Trend following rules aren't designed to get in at the out at the exact top but this system can get you pretty close into the exact bottom so and i've tested many different exit algorithms and i'm going to share it with you the winner and the one that we currently trade right now okay so this right here is axon enterprises okay this is aaxn Again, I want to show you some different looks, the different patterns, because they don't all look the same. And I want to show you some small winners, and I want to show you some big winners. So this one right here, uh, this had a weekly reversal pattern, right? The low of this undercut this whole base. So rule number one is clear. Uh, it closed above the previous week's close, so the bar is green. Rule number two, check. 
above average volume check. So this one, we actually came within a couple pennies of getting stopped out. We entered at the open on Monday. We had our stop loss under this bar and we, we literally came within a penny, but rules are rules. We stuck to the rules and it got close. It didn't pick us off and then it turned around. We sold half at 8%. We sold, it let the rest run and it pulled back. And then we sold the other half at a 3.2% gain. So we netted about six, five and a half, six percent net on this trade. Just a nice little income trade, just a nice little swing trade. Um, but this one, you know, this is a classic setup, right? And we're looking at classic patterns. So let's look at another one. And uh, for full disclosure, CrowdStrike is one that we're still in. It's one that I own. So it's not a buy or sell recommendation. I'm just going to kind of throw that out there. But I want to show you another one just to show you when you can identify these bottoms to, to, for you to see how powerful it can be, uh, especially if you're coming out of, you know, a correction or something much deeper like the COVID sell-off that we came out of. So look, look at this big reversal bar, this weekly reversal pattern right here. Rule number one, undercut the previous three weeks. One, two, three, I think that's clear. Rule number two, the bar is green. Rule number three, above average volume. Now the 50 periods didn't start here because it's a relative IPO, but this bar right here is above all these. So to me, I, I chalk it up as above average volume. And then we have our rules, right? Now this one, this is actually an example where I didn't buy till two weeks later. I missed it the first time around, right? I think I bought Amazon first and then I bought another stock and then I bought this week three. Uh, so I it ended up buying this one a little bit late as it was consolidating. I bought it around $60, $60.15, something like that. But again, we sold half at 8% and then we let the rest run until it broke the 50-day moving average for the 10-week, which is the same thing on the weekly chart. It hasn't broken it yet, right? So I have no idea which stocks are going to be the big winners and i have no idea which stocks are going to be the losers I, I buy high quality setups and then the wins and losses are completely random okay if you would have asked me when i went after i bought this at 60 dollars and 15 cents i would have thought it would have been a loser right it's just because you just don't know because it was going nowhere for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden it just absolutely took off but our rules my rules based approach kept me in, I didn't get stopped out because sometimes stocks just take a couple weeks and then boom, it just absolutely took off. You know, we're up a lot, made a ton of money on this trade, still running and I don't know how long it'll run, but that's the idea. I have no idea which stocks are gonna double because um, this stock hit all the way up to 120. So the stock did double from entry and then it pulled back a little bit. So maybe it'll pull back and consolidate and continue higher, but this one, looks really good okay so you know we've walked through i'm going to kind of walk through we've walked through several different setups right you got the weekly reverse on the amazon did very well we followed our money management rules walk through kbh home and this you know is a nice pullback within an uptrend reverse and then it just continued to take off and then we sold the rest right here because i'm not going to sit through you know i'm not going to sit through if it falls all the way back down because we have been in a secular bull market even though we've had the bear market this year um you know but still i'm not taking any chances because then look what would have happened this stock went from 40 all the way down to nine dollars and 79 cents i use hard stop and hard rule hard rules this is something that doesn't look as obvious but is actually clearly a valid pattern and it worked out for a nice income trade and then we have CrowdStrike. You do not have to have a ton of Amazon and CrowdStrikes in your portfolio to really, really make your year, okay? And I have tested, here's the money management rule. So if you really haven't written anything down or if you need something else to write down, write down this. These are the money management rules for the stock trades. This is my exit algorithm. Now, why is this so important? because I've tested all my trades over the last couple of years and said, hey, what if I would have done this, 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 I tested it against really poor exit algorithms, mechanical, completely mechanical rules based versus my discretionary trades, right? All four exit mechanical strategies outperformed uh, just, you know, when I thought a stock was, the run was done, okay? So clearly a couple of years ago, I made a shift said, okay, right? The mechanical systems are doing great. Um, we don't know, you know, we don't know which ones are going to do the best. So 
we're going to run with that. And this was really the winner. So here are the rules. We enter at the open on Monday. So it's an end of week close. We do our homework over the weekend and then we enter at the open on Monday. There's our buy. Our target one, we sell half at 8%. If you want to, you can sell half at 10, but we sell half at 8%. And the minute we sell half at 8%, once we once target one we is hit the 8%, we raise our stop to break even on the remaining shares. Okay. Now, why do I do this? Well, because the stock can go up 8%, you raise your, your, your target can go up to 8%, you sell half, right? You still have half to potentially let, let run. And then what if it turns around and then you raise your stop to break even, which is your entry? What if the stock rolls over, just completely rolls over from there? Well, if it, you sell half at 8% and half at 0%, you still net a nice 4% income trade, okay? So you're still playing with house money and or you can continue to let it run. You can continue to let it run. Now, I have tested an exit strategy where you sell all at 8%, but when you, you're you not going to have any big winners because you're selling everything at 8%. So uh, once I hit target one, I sell half, and then I raise stop to break even on the remaining shares. Then for the remaining half, these are the trend following rules. For the remaining half, I trail 1% behind the 50-day simple moving average on the remaining shares. So I, this is profit maximization right here. I'm just looking to let it run, just like CrowdStrike, just like Amazon. Um, if you would have asked me, I would have thought those trades would have, I would, have, I would have thought we would have taken another leg down. I would have thought those trades, you know, would have been over by now, but my rules kept me in and my rules helped me make a lot of money. So that's why it's so important to make this stuff mechanical as possible. That way your feelings, emotions, your gut does not get involved because rule number three, the market is always right. And our stop loss is a max of 10% or 1% under the signal bars candle, whatever is higher. So sometime these signal bars, let me go back to CrowdStrike. This is, you know, if I would have bought here on Monday, it, I, my stop loss would be way above 10% because this is a very, very, you know, long candle. So I'm going to have to just put my stop loss somewhere around here around 10%. Never risk more than 10%. Sometimes you'll have some shorter stop losses like this. I think uh, we put it 1% under this, under this week's candle. Stop loss was around seven, uh, but if the candle was longer, I would have maxed it out at 10. So I hope that makes sense. So never risk more than a 10% stop loss. All What is very, very important to keep in mind on all these money management rules, they need to be mechanical. It means the minute you buy, you need to turn around and put your stop loss in, put your price targets in, right? Go fishing. Whatever happens in the middle does not matter, okay? So can you do this? Can you spend 15 minutes per week to find these setups? Maybe it takes you 20 when you first start out, right? But this is designed to do a little bit of homework on the weekend, and then you place your market order on Monday, and then you go fishing. Okay, I like to go fishing, I like to take my son fishing, I don't wanna be glued to the screen all day. All right, so can you set up a bracket order? I haven't taught this yet, but this is the concept of what a bracket order is, and every Broken every brokerage is just a little bit different. Had to take a drink. Okay, so here is just an example of a bracket order I took from uh, Street Smart Edge uh, Charles Schwab. So what a bracket order is is it allows you after you get filled to turn around and put a stop loss. So this is like Red Robin Gourmet Burgers, 69 shares at 57.90. This is an old snapshot. I don't know what that price is now, but this is just. Um, for you to see. So I'm gonna say, okay, I'm filled. I own Red Robin Gourmet Burger. I wanna sell the whole thing at 10% or the whole thing at the stop loss. So whatever happens in between these two price points doesn't matter. You don't even have to look at the stock. You can just wait till that your phone goes ding and it tells you whether you made money or hit your stop loss, okay? So I think a bracket is something, when I talk about a rules-based approach and making things incredibly mechanical, uh, a bracket is something that is, is very, very easy to do, especially for busy professionals or for people that just don't want to stare at the overall market. Again, every broker is different. You have to contact your broker, but they can walk you through it in five minutes, right? So this is designed to be very, very easy, very, very minimal effort. And if you can identify good patterns, you're going to do very well over time. 
So I'm going to walk through uh, 2019 performance, and I'm going to walk through 2020 performance because that's what I would want to know, right? We're going to, we've been in a bear market, and now we're at all-time high. So 2019, this uh, my Monday morning trace, there was 38 of them. So I had 27 winners with a 71% win ratio. So this is my alerts that I sent out to my subscribers. On average, about one trade or about three per month. Now, if you can see, there were only 38 trades throughout the whole calendar year. The reason why I do that is because there are some times, like this March, where the coronavirus was just selling off and I just decided to just stay in cash for a little bit. There are some times where I either A, don't find a high quality setup that I like, uh, or B, maybe the market is just getting slaughtered and we should stay away or keep our powder dry for a couple weeks. So every now and then I'll pick a week where I'm just like, you know what, nothing looks good right now. Let's just focus on quality, quality, high uh, win ratio setups and we'll see what happens maybe later this week or the following week. So on the average trade lasts about two to four weeks and you could have about four to five trades on at a time. Right now we have six on, okay? So in 2019, our average net gain per trade was uh, almost 6%. So that means out of the 38 trades, every time you hit the buy button, win or lose, your average gain per trade or your average trade netted almost a 6% gain, right? That's a nice, nice weekly income clip. Now, how do we do 2020 in the middle of this bear market? Honestly, we've done even better, right? Because I continue to perfect this system and I continue to work on it, uh, but we've had, we're have had we sitting on some really, really nice winners right now. The last 24 trades, and this is completely up-to-date numbers uh, through July, 15 winners, so a 63% win ratio. Um, I, skip, I decided to discretionary skip March due to the coronavirus sell-off again. You know, if I'm going to send out alerts, like I wouldn't send out an alert that I wouldn't put my own money on the line. And when the market is limited down for like three weeks in a row, it's best just to keep the powder dry. So I did skip March, uh, the alerts due to the coronavirus sell-off, and several of these trades and these numbers are still live. But have, look at this. Year to date in 2020, out of the 24 trades, my net gain every trade uh, is 6.37%. Right, and again, that's including the losses too. So on average, every time you would hit the buy button, win or lose, uh, you would have yielded 6.3% uh, net gain per trade. Now, if you put this in a portfolio style, uh, year to date, the portfolio is up 20% uh, year to date versus I think a positive one for the S&P 500. So we absolutely kicked the living uh, snot out of the S&P 500 for a couple of reasons. One, we skipped the coronavirus sell off. Two, we got in near the bottom with Amazon, CrowdStrike, and uh, I have uh, two other software stocks that we're sitting on some nice winners. So I use a little discretion, but uh, we are doing very, very well this year. Now, if you take this 6% per trade going all the way back to last year and a half, this is what you would have made on a weekly basis if you would have cashed these out and laddered them, right? So how to pull weekly income from this? Now, Let's say you're at a 5,000 per trade clip. Like that's how much you're putting in. And some's going to be a lot more and some's going to be a lot less. You would have netted $215 per week or $931 per month, right? And that's going back 18 months. This would have been your weekly or monthly performance if you would have yielded, uh, put that much in a trade. What if you put $10,000 a trade, right? That is a nice uh, car payment almost on a weekly basis. Uh, the monthly income, man, that's... That's a cabin rental right there, or right? that's a cabin uh, payment. Like, you know, I, and, and what you do with your money, you know, maybe you spend it on your kids, your grandkids, whatever the case is. Uh, and then obviously I have some people that put in a lot more per trade. Uh, and, you know, they're making about $1,000 per week or have averaged uh, in the last 18 months or about 4,600 on a monthly basis based on our performance numbers. Now, should you add, one contract, one option contract per, per alert. Now, not all alerts are liquid enough for options, but if I go back and say, okay, you know, if, if we would have added one call option, that would have added an additional $793 in extra income per month. $793, one call option contract to added on top of the stock trade, right? That's real money right there. This is real money right here. Um, so just kind of visualize it right here is, you know, this is just a $5,000 per trade going back last 18 months. 
This is what you would have, uh, your income would have been on a monthly basis. If you had added one call option, uh, you're looking at about 85% more income with just one call option per trade or uh, $1,724 per month. So you can see once you add, you have the stock system, once you add options to go along with it, it's done very well. Now this is really designed, I, I taught you a complete rules-based system. This is really designed to take the emotions out of trading, right? Follow a rules-based approach. Rules-based approach is designed to give you more freedom. We know the smart money user, uses them because they work. They follow rules-based approach, the hedge funds. Uh, keep drawdowns limited, right? When, when I'm playing with house money or I'm raising myself to break even, that, that's gonna help me keep my drawdown limited. Uh, and a rules-based system allows you to turn trading into a business and stop being a hobby. Like there is a mental, mental shift. So to follow a rules-based approach, uh, th these are testimonials and I get these all the time. This is Scott, it says I sold half at 8%, so he followed the rules and have been rolling uh, the remaining ever since. Uh, currently up 198% on a closed position and 220% on the current open position. Right now here, he's talking about options. Uh, this is another one, and even though these are some very, very big numbers, I actually like this testimonial even more. It says, Stephen, I'll slowly come around to completely following your guidance, and as a result, I'm doing quite well. Uh, I realize we are on a hot streak right now, but your basic principles are rock, rock solid. I'm making some outside buys. I call it Plato using your concepts. So far, so good. So you have Jim that really went from a you know gut feel to now following a rules-based approach, and he's doing much, much better because of it. So what if I were to give you my next weekly reversal pick, uh, just for a dollar, just for one buck, the price of a soda. And in addition, I'm gonna teach you how to produce the weekly income for that same dollar. So I'm not only gonna give you the next weekly pick, I'm gonna teach you how to fish. Like I'm gonna teach you how to do this yourself. There's only so much I can fit in a 45 minute webinar. Uh, so one dollar is gonna get you complete access to the weekly reversal course. So this goes into a little bit greater detail, uh, so this is where I really dive deep and to show you, you know, what scams to find these stocks, uh, how much to put in each stock, right? I talk about some real money management rules, um, you know, how to narrow down the list. So every week you might have two or three. How do we narrow that down to the top candidate and when to take profits? I walk you through several different exit algorithms you can choose from, but I show you the winner and I taught you that winner today. So for $1, you're going to get complete access to this course. Uh, and in addition, I'm going to give you uh, my signals, my picks. So when I go through my charts on the weekend, I'm going to deliver one pick per week, one of these weekly reversal patterns straight to you every Monday morning, right? So right to your inbox. So you're going to get the full course so you can be taught how to fish. You can do this yourself while you're learning. I'm going to give you my top high quality signals as well. And in addition, this weekly reversal course, this pattern this is just one of my top five strategies. I'm gonna give you the five cornerstones course, and that's gonna give you access to absolutely all of them. So kind of recap, you're gonna get the weekly reversal course, which is a huge value, 597. You're gonna get the signal, so I'm gonna send you my picks for you. I'm gonna do the heavy lifting for you, and the five cornerstones course. Huge value, $1,391. I'm giving this to you for just take a $1 trial, okay? So you can go to thetradersplan.com slash investors expo. And it's right there in the chat box. So again, it is a secure order form. Go to HTTPS. You can click on the link, um, thetradersplan.com slash investors expo. Okay, so you can go and click on that in the chat box. Whoops, let me kind of drag this over. Okay, so kind of one more thing I wanted to add. You can stay as long as you like. This is a $1 seven day trial, okay? But I like to put my money from my mouth, where my mouth is, and I like to reward people that want to stay a little bit longer, right? Maybe they really like my setups, they like my alerts, they like my system. So here's my 12 month performance guarantee. If, if you stay 12 months, which you don't have to, but if my alerts don't produce a net gain of 3% per trade, I will give you all your money back for the 12 months, plus I will mail you a $500 check. So for those of you who really like the system and then want to stick around for a while, I'm going to reward you with the performance guarantee. And for whatever reason, if I can't produce a net gain per trade of 3%, which is still phenomenal weekly income, I'm going to give you all your money back plus a $500 check. Okay? 
So that's me putting my money where my mouth is. Uh, so again, you know, for just a dollar, you can go take a trial. You can get access to absolutely everything uh, that we talked about. The weekly reversal course, the weekly reversal signals. This is where I send them to you uh, Monday morning. Sometime I send them right before the market. Sometimes I send them right after the market opens. And my top five strategies, the five cornerstones course. Just a dollar. Go to that order form. It walks you through everything. Very, very easy process. You have literally absolutely uh, nothing to lose. Let me kind of go back into the, the present mode. Uh, you have absolutely nothing to lose. And, you know, everything again, right? What if just what if just this one strategy, you know, added uh, a couple extra hundred dollars per week or an extra couple thousand dollars per week? Like, what would that be worth it to you, right? So just give it a test. Um, I am open for any questions. If there are any questions, type them in the chat box and I'd be happy to kind of walk through it. Uh, I can tell you the number one question that I always get asked is, can I turn this into a, a can I use this on the daily chart? Okay, so I'm gonna walk through some FAQs. Can I use this on the daily chart? Uh, the answer is no, I do not recommend doing that. I've tested this on the weekly chart. I have not tested on the daily chart, but the lower the time frame you go, the more whip saws and the lower win ratio you're going to have. So I have really designed this weekly reversal course to be a once a week income producing setup uh, and not a daily setup. You know, if you were decided to trade on the daily, that's completely up to you, but I do not have the data to back that up. Okay. Another question I always get asked is, can I, um, can I do the reversal, right? If I, if this, if I see this weekly reversal on the upside, uh, can I go short the other way? Again, I have never tested a shorting strategy. I think I have tested some, but not relative to this weekly reversal pattern. I do not think it would work very well because the reality is, is most shorts or most pullbacks, they don't last very long because the market has an upward bias, okay? The market has an upward bias, so I would prefer to be a bull. Um, you know, we're sitting on some really good trades right now. You can go in the members area and check all that out. Uh, if, is there any questions uh, regarding this? Let's see the questions. I wonder if I'm missing yes. anything. Yes, Stephen, please open the chat box because we had uh, questions all the way of your presentation, especially from Mark. He was really interested in um, role number one. Okay, let me, oh, I see, in the questions, okay. Do you do, here, I'll just kind of, uh, let me kind of walk through these. Okay, so, um, where are we at? Actually, I'll, I'll just start from the bottom. How far out in expirations do you trade options? Uh, about 30 days out. Um, you suggested option purchases, what term and strike price at the money? Usually now uh, the option alerts are, are not a part of the dollar trial, but just kind of let you know a lot of times I'll go 30 days out, one strike out the money. Uh, I have no access to stock, but futures will work here too. I do not recommend using this system with futures. If you decide to test it, I would put it through a thorough test because futures you're using a lot of leverage. Uh, Mark, what was your, are you there? Can options be used with strategy? Yes, we already answered that. Options. Uh, Gordon said, uh, seems like the stock price can be, seems like the stock price can be more than 8% first target. So yeah, I mean, the stock could be 10%, the first target could be eight, but where you make the rest up is where you have a trend following rules where you raise the stock uh, to break even. Uh, Mark, uh, Q and A's, or I understand that. Uh, rule number one, explain the undercut. So the low of the signal bar, let me kind of go back here. The undercut is rule number one. Let me find a chart here. This, the undercut has to, the low of this has to be under the low of these three weeks. It has to undercut it, right? It's a nice shakeout, nice shakeout. And Mark, I'm sorry, I usually answer Q and A questions at the very end. Uh, so that is what I mean by undercut. This signal bar has to undercut the previous three weeks. I want this low to be the lowest point the previous three weeks. Uh, what about the candle in February? I'm not sure which one you're talking about and which chart you're talking about. Um, name pronounced in Kabizel. 
been looking at some of your recordings we cannot find where you take it through a sound. Is there a recording somewhere that takes you through a complete trade live and recorded? Uh, uh, this was for the previous speaker and oh, okay. we had one more fresh question. You have similar uh, similar rules for the option trades. Uh, no, the option trades are different. So we take the signals off the stock. Uh, off the stock and then uh, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll still buy the individual stock and then I'll, I'll add one call option to add that extra growth income, uh, add that extra alpha to the overall portfolio. So usually with the options, I'll have a, a two to one risk reward. I'll have a 50% stop loss and a 100% target. So Tim, yes, just a dollar to try. Any other questions? Okay, what if I take the trades in the direction of the long term using the daily, the four hour trigger pullbacks? Now, I, I really haven't, and I try um, uh, long mark, I try not to have analysis paralysis. Like there's a thousand different ways you could test it, but I know for a fact I, I, I have a system that works. And what I have, one thing that I, I believe that has had the most uh, success in this system is actually the exit algorithm, right? Sell half at 8% and let the rest ride uh, because you have to have trend following rules to have those big gains. Uh, with options, how far do you go out? 30 days. Um, leash, uh, just monthly options. I know we're about to run out of time. Guys, I'll kind of go back to this page. And again, it, there is no risk to try it for a dollar. You can, you know, if you don't want to stick around, you can cancel absolutely any time. Just email me at Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, at thetradersplan.com. So I might just kind of type that in real quick. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer. But um, um, hi, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're listening in from. Uh, today, I want to share with you a pattern in candlesticks. Now, candlesticks is nothing brand new, so I won't you know, dare to claim that I invented anything in regards to this. But the one thing I have done is study, study uh, a lot about candlesticks and uh, focus on the ones that really, really work in this day and age. Now, everybody would be able to admit or at least say that times have changed. Times have really changed. We are in unprecedented times. And um, I want to show you some things that are working as far as candlestick is concerned before people end up like just giving up on it because uh, there's a lot of information on candlesticks that you can still apply today that unfortunately people are not uh, utilizing. And so today, that's what I want to show you. I'm going to show you one pattern. Hopefully, this will help you with your trading like it's helping us and our students with our trading. So let's go ahead and get started with our disclaimer first, which is that, you know, everything that I say here is for educational purposes. This is not a recommendation to buy or sell anything. Please understand trading and investing does involve risk. So please keep that in mind. Okay, so what I wanted to start off with was this. If you can relate to comments like this, now this is something that I've heard a lot of people say. I've seen people do, uh, or, or or type up, or you know, post on social media, and that is there is a big disconnect with the stock market and the economy as we speak today. Okay, um, I've heard people say nothing makes sense anymore. Uh, some people get frustrated that fundamentals don't work. Nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing makes sense, and. If you are in that boat, hopefully today I'm able, I'll be able to show you that that's not necessarily true. And if you are one of those that do believe that there are information out there that can really help navigate this market, um, then hopefully this will just add to your arsenal of how to take advantage of the stock market. Now, when I say that, when people say that there's nothing that works, uh, the reason why I tend to disagree with that is because there's also this notion out there that the stock market is random. And I tend to ask people, is it truly random or is it a bunch of people moving the market to suit their own, you know, preconceived, 
you know, intentions. At the end of the day, I don't believe the stock market is random. I actually looked up the definition of randomness in a, on, on Google, and it says randomness is a lack of patterns. It's a lack of patterns. And so when I started thinking about that, if randomness is a lack of patterns, so that means that if there are patterns, then the market is not random. And then that literally changed my perspective and made me start thinking, well, if there are patterns, well, what type of patterns do I need to be paying attention to? And that's what made the huge difference from me being a novice trader to becoming an experienced investor is what are the patterns that I need to focus on? Now, I do understand there are tons and tons and tons of patterns out there, but I realized that if I just pick a few patterns and only invest in the market when I see those patterns, then I would do well. And that is kind of like what this is shown here. So today I'm going to talk to you guys about a bottoming pattern. A bottoming pattern because this is pattern has shown up over and over and over since the COVID-19. And unfortunately, I've seen way too many people uh, miss it simply because they were not aware of it. So I would hope to show you guys this day and go forward. Maybe you won't be able to miss it. But before I do so, just a little bit about myself. I am the chief technical strategist over here at Right Side Trading. I've been in the accounting and finance industry and investing background for about 17 years now. The last eight to nine years, I've been focusing strictly on technical analysis well, as it relates to the stock market. And one of the things we specialize over here is that we specialize on finding great companies at really attractive prices with minimal risk and you know, stocks that we believe can really rally in price. Okay. That is what we try to focus on. And so our research and all the studies that we do is based strictly on price movements and patterns in the major indices, which is the SPX, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Russell, as well as the Dow Transportation, as well as the VIX as well too. And so once we understand the patterns that we're looking for, we apply that to IPO stock, we apply that to dividend stock, we apply that to earning seasons and different market cycles that we see out there. Okay, so that's one of the things that we do. Um, I have a quote that says, you know, people will get excited about stocks that have made huge moves, but the true credit goes to those who have trained their eyes to see the setup. And that's the whole point about right side trading is learning to see or anticipate, see the setup before the results shows up. When I hear people say, oh, I wanna jump into Tesla now, it's like, okay, that's fine, but did you see the setup prior to the big rally that it has made? Okay, when we see technology stocks and everybody likes to talk about how technology has outperformed the market and done really, really well. The question was when the market was at the bottom during the COVID-19 pandemic, did we see those setups that said, wow, here is a great setup that we should get into. And so when people see the setups, and I usually tell people, those who come to me say, wow, look at this great setup. I admire those people more than the ones that say, wow, look at how much the stock has gone up. The idea is try to get in at the setup. So hopefully I can show you at least one of these setups. Now, as far as credibility is concerned, um, I wanna share with you guys this report. This is a report that I write personally every week. Uh, I send it out to my subscribers on Sunday night. And this was back on January 23rd. I want you guys, January 24th, somewhere around here. You can see the date right here. This is just an excerpt of that report. And the reason why I share this is because back on January 24th, that weekend, I wrote to my subscribers and says, look, we're seeing certain things in the market. One of the things is something that we call a market in unison. It's a pattern that we see in the market. I'm not gonna go into that one today, but we saw patterns that we call market in unison, which told us that the uptrend that we had been seeing in the market up until then, now this was before the pandemic really hit the way we now know it to be. But on January 24th, we said, look, something is wrong with the market and we should be expecting a reversal at worst or maybe a slowdown. Now, we had no idea that the market was gonna turn into what we've seen, but we saw the pattern that, wait a second, the market is not gonna rally anymore. And so in that report, I also wrote right here, you can see this, it says the writing is already on the wall. It is time to take profit. It is time to exit our positions. The market is warning us to take heed. 
that was literally what we wrote in that report based on just patterns that we saw in the market. So this is why I say the stock market is not random. People who caught, who got caught off guard in this pandemic drop or bear market is simply because they failed to see the patterns that warns us of what is about to happen. Okay, and so if you notice in here, this wasn't where we say, you know, uh, what I call hedging ourselves. We didn't hedge ourselves in the sense that we say, look, oh, the market is going to go down, but it could go up or, you know, get ready for a downside. But, you know, if it goes up to take this position here, it was very, very precise and very to the point when we said the writing is already on the wall, meaning that it's already happening. This is about to, you know, run into some problems. The one thing we knew for sure was that the market wasn't going to go up. So much so that we said, look, take your profits, exit your positions. Look, if you don't do this, then, you know, the market is already is sounding out great alarms that something is not right. And we all now know what happened after that. The market dropped considerably after that. Okay. We've seen that. Now, at the same time, when the market hit the bottom, you can see this date right here. As the market hit the bottom, this was on March 27th. Most people now know that the market hit the bottom on March 23rd. We saw that on March 23rd, but we didn't write the report until March 27th. But down here on March 27th or March 23rd, we said, wow, the question is, have we found the bottom? Or is this just going to become some type of relief rally, which is very interesting. And I said that because I knew that people would say, look, this is a bear market rally, or this is just, you know, something that's going to go to some type of Fibonacci level, and then it's going to come falling down. And for so many weeks and months, people were saying, oh, we're going to test the new lows. We're going to have new lows. We're going to test the bottom. We're going to test the bottom. But if you see what we said, because of the peculiar patterns that we saw, I said, look, just like we saw on the bearish signals that warned us of the bearish drop, this time, the market is communicating that it is time to cover all our shorts. It is time to exit all positions and get ready for what? Get ready for a rally. It is not coincidence that that happened where we picked, you know, we saw the one in signs a few weeks before the market dropped. And then we also saw the warning signs of a bullish market prior to the market actually becoming what we see now. And while the market was rallying and rallying and rallying, so many people were in denial. So many people were in disbelief. So you, mean, you could even hear it in the media. It's like, why is this market rallying? And so many people were focusing on what they saw in the economy and could not understand why the market was rallying. And they blamed the feds and they said it was manipulation and all kind of finger pointing. But the point of the matter is, technical analysis was the only thing telling us, wait a second, the market is ready to go higher. And we saw that. And that's why I said, look, get out of all your short positions, get out of all your shorts. It is time to get ready for a rally. And so the market has rallied since then. We all now look back. I've seen people say, wow. I mean, I saw a lot of people following a lot of YouTubers coming out there and saying, short the market, short the market. Every time we had a, a blip in the market, people were shorting only to get, you know, creamed in the face, creamed in the face over and over and over because they were on the wrong side of the market. They did not see the patterns that suggested we are ready to go higher. And for a long time, people were calling it a bear market rally, not wanting to admit that it was a bull market. They kept on calling it a bear market rally, which suggests that they think it's only going to last for a little bit before it goes and makes new lows. But as we can see today, that has not happened. So there was a few people that saw those bottoms. And the point is, anybody could have seen it if they learned to see the pattern. So one of the patterns that I'm going to show you here and I share this because this is a bottom pattern, just in case in the future we see another bear market drop or something like that. Hopefully, if you see this pattern show up, you shouldn't question it. You should see it for what it is, which is the market communicating to you that it is ready to go up. And so that bottom end pattern is something that we call a bottoms up. I mean, this is something that 
myself and our coaching students uh, decided to come up with. It was a pattern that we discovered that was showing up after doing studies on market crashes. We've seen studies on stocks that have hit bottom. How do you see stocks that are bottoming? And we now we started noticing this pattern right here. Okay. Now, some people might think that this is a piercing candle, but it's not. Let me just, I'm not going to go into too much detail outside of the fact that it is not a piercing candle. Needless to say, the biggest thing about this is we do not care about the wicks. We don't care about the wicks whatsoever. The biggest thing we focus on is the body. And what we want to see is very simple. It's just two things. The first is the bottom of this green candle needs to be lower than the bottom of the red candle. That's the first criteria. The second criteria is that the top of this green body needs to be a, below the top of the red body. That's it. Anywhere, as long as it's not above the red, and as long as this one is not above the red body, we are fine. So we want to below here. It needs to be below the red, and this also needs to be below the red. If we have that and we see that, and this is a pattern, ladies and gentlemen, that's telling us get ready for a potential rally in the market. Okay. Especially, especially if we see this after a huge drop in price. And then when this appears, do not be mistaken, do not be, in, be afraid. You are seeing the market telling you that it is ready to go higher. So let's take a look at some charts. Um, here is a chart of the S&P 500. And I don't know how many people are aware of the drop that we had in 2018. 2018 started off, the year started off pretty well. There was a lot of people, I recall, saying that they were making a lot of good money in 2018, only to lose it all in October, November, December of 2018. How many people remember that? You remember that? Okay. When that happened, thank you. When that happened, people were like astonished. Oh, I mean, there was people calling for, you know, the greatest crash of all, uh, of all history about to happen. But then notice what happened right here. This is the monthly chart. Notice what happened right here. We had the same thing. We had the bottom of the green below the bottom of the red. We had the top of the green below the top of the red. That was a bottoms up. Now, at that time, again, a lot of people were in denial. That denial turned into frustration as they saw the market rallying higher. Frustration turned into disbelief and total lack of confidence as the market kept on going higher. But all along, the warning sign was there saying we've hit bottom. Not only did we hit bottom, but we took out all time highs and people were astonished. Why is this market going higher? Well, what do you think happened again? This is the whole financial, uh, the, the pandemic crash. That's what I'm acquainted it. I don't think they've come up with a name yet. Okay. The pandemic crash, this is the same thing happening here, whereby we saw the market go down and then all of a sudden, same thing right here, same thing right there. And once we see this, we say, wow, this is a market, big picture, because this is a monthly chart, all right? Yes, this is a monthly chart, but it works on any time frame, by the way, okay? Active trader, I saw a five-minute chart. My presentation, I don't go to anything less than a daily chart, but I do, I want to um, assure you that you can see the same thing on a five minutes. You can just go to a five minutes and look for those patterns and you'll see it there, okay? Uh, I don't trade anything less than a, a daily chart personally, uh, but I do have students that have traded less than that and they've seen it on there. They've used the same thing. Matter of fact, it's one of the things that they use to pick the bottom for the day for those who trade on a daily, um, you know, day trading. I don't do day trading, unfortunately. So, but the pattern is still the same, okay? The pattern is still the same. You can do it on a daily, weekly, monthly, hourly, 30 minute, um, you know, 15 minute, 10 minute. It doesn't matter what time frame it is, okay? Um, I think um, like the previous presenter said, the, the lower the time frame is, the, the choppier a market can be. And so if anybody asks me, like, why do you only stay on a daily, weekly, and monthly? It's because I don't like to be focused on the charts all day, every day. When I see something like this, which is what we've done, from the time that we saw this bottoms up, the only thing we've been expecting is all-time highs. And I've been telling people, look, no matter what happens in the market, 
day in, day out, week in, week out, at the end of the month, we'll probably be higher. And we'll probably be higher, we'll probably be higher until the day we take out this all-time high. And again, it has astonished a lot of people you know, who are just like, wow. I mean, I've heard experts say the same thing where they expect the market to go down only to see that it just keeps on going higher and higher and higher, okay? It became entertaining after a while to kind of see, okay, I wonder when they'll change their point of view and say, wow, okay, we were wrong about this market going lower is actually going higher. A good number of people have already started changing their point of view and saying we're in a bearish or bullish market now, okay? Some people are still waiting for it to fall. You're absolutely right, but again, Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, this right here is the bottom that got us into 2019 being one of the best years in a very, I, I can't remember, I think it, they said in a decade or two decades or something like that. Whereas by the end of 2018, everybody was crying that it was going to go into a bear market only to see that by the end of 2019, it was one of the best years ever, okay? It all started, ladies and gentlemen, with this pattern, keyword. The same pattern is now what we saw. Now, I know people were expecting this to go down even further. I seen people say the economy has not recovered. But at the end of the day, once this pattern was printed, that was it for us. The market is ready to go higher. To verify this or to, to establish this pattern as a legitimate pattern even more is the financial crisis of 2008. Now, the financial crisis of 2008 was what made me decide I wanted to get into the stock market because I was in real estate, didn't know anything about the stock market. Then market collapsed. I was one of those that got caught in, um, you know, in the, in the collapse of 2008. And I told myself, I wanted to know what these people knew, the ones that knew that the market was going to crash what was it that they knew that would have told me to be prepared for a crash? Now, interesting enough, if you look down here at the bottom of 2008, that is the same pattern. You can see how the bottom of the green is below the bottom of the red, and we can see that the top of the green is below the top of the red. Now, that was the March low of 2009, before we went to all-time high. Now, interesting enough, I was not even aware, I was still, it wasn't until 2013 that I started seeing signs of recovery in the economy, okay? And I say this because those people who are looking to say, oh, I wanna see restaurants open up, I wanna see restaurants at full capacity, I wanna see you know, everybody walking around without no mask anymore, I wanna see people going to movie theaters and all that kind of stuff before I believe that this market is ready to go higher. And I'm saying, look, the market predicts the economy Okay, the market predicts the economy. The economy does not predict the market. And what I mean by that is the market was already going way higher. If anybody recalls in this March 2009 when we hit bottom, nobody thought the market was about to recover. Almost nobody. I know I didn't even think because I was looking at what everybody's looking at right now, which is what's going on in the economy. Am I seeing people get into jobs back? It wasn't until 2013 that I saw that 2013 and I saw people were actually able to apply for a job, get a job and not be turned away, right? But look at what happened to the market since then. The market had already been rallying, right? And so that was the bottom in 2008. The bottom in 2008, the same exact pattern. Let's go back to the dot-com crash, ladies and gentlemen. This is the dot-com crash of 2000 to 2003. I was in college during that time. Notice what happened right here, ladies and gentlemen. This was that same bottom end pattern, okay? Now, this one went up, came back down a little bit, but notice how this area right here was the bottom. And that's the whole point is that this was the bottom market rallied back to all time highs from there. So to say that the market, nothing works, and we just saw that, wait a second, even right now, we've had the same exact pattern that was there in 2018, was the bottom of 2008, was also the bottom of the dot-com crash. And now that it's happening again, it's kind of interesting because I hear people say, wow, if only I could turn back the clock and go back to 2008 when it was at the bottom and start buying then. Well, guess what? The market is showing us that now again, but 
it's hard for people to believe it. And you know what? That's just, that's the way we are as human beings. It's like, we say, oh, if, because hindsight is always 2020. If I knew that, people are going to come back and say, wow, if I had known 2020 was the bottom, March 2020 was the bottom, oh, I would have started joining, you know, jumping in the market. But as it's happening, we don't see the patterns. And that's what's going on right now. Some people ask me, well, is it only in the market itself? No. You know, this happens in stocks too as well. When Apple had the same bottom in pattern in 2019, January 2019, I was begging people, buy Apple. Buy Apple, please. You know what people were telling me then? No, Apple is done. You know, the iWatch is not working and all that kind of stuff. That's the, that's the bottom in pattern. It doesn't get clearer than that. This stock is ready to go higher. And it wasn't until it reached all-time highs and it became a trillion dollar company that people started saying, wow, maybe it's time to buy Apple. And this is why I say the true credit goes to who? Those who have trained their eyes to see the setup. It was one of those stocks in the pandemic crash. Another, we were just looking when we saw that this was a market that was ready to go. It was like, oh my gosh, let's go find all the stocks that have now had a bottom in pattern on the monthly chart. And honestly, you could just pick any one of them and you would have seen them do all well. You go back and you see all these stocks are now at all time highs that show the bottom in pattern in April when the market is showing the bottom. Neo is one that a lot of people talk about recently. This is a weekly chart now. So this right here was the same bottom in pattern. A lot of people are talking about Neo now. People want to get into all these electronic vehicles, Tesla, Neo, you know. Well, back then when it was showing the bottom in pattern, people were not paying attention to it. This was when Neo was at almost three dollars. Today is about almost at twelve something at this point in time. And this was not too long ago. This was during the bottom in the market. Okay. Um, here we go. The S and P five hundred. This is the weekly chart of the dot com. Uh, the the trade war drop is what I call it. A trade war crash of October. November, December, 2018, same thing right there. Same pattern, all-time highs. Here's PayPal during the whole pandemic crash. Same exact thing on there. Here's a SPY recently, this was in May, and we even had another one that happened in July uh, that recently just happened in July. Uh, but this was in May, and this rally that we saw in the month of May, it was like, wow, what's happened to this market? It's done well. Here's one that just happened recently, like, literally a week ago um this was one that we were in uh bottoms up candle signal was shown to us on july 14 2020 now we have a software called magenta trader anybody who knows about us knows about magenta trader and one of the things now we have done is we have actually installed these uh, unique patterns these unique candlestick signals in the magenta software so that now every day we can just go in and say give me a list of all the stocks that has a bottom in pattern. And then we choose to see what happened. This is what the Magenta software looks like, okay? This is that bottom in pattern when we scanned for it on July 14th that showed us, wait a second, we have a bottom in pattern, okay? Now, once we have that, one of the unique things about the Magenta software is, let me do this, I'll bring this screen over here. This is the screen right here as well. Uh, one of the things you'll see is that on that day right there, I want you to pay attention to the trade condition and the trade action, which is a unique thing about our Magenta software. It lets you know each day what you should be doing. And the interesting thing is, again, because we don't, we're not people that like to say, uh, uh, you know, let's buy him, but let's cover over here. Once you understand the patterns and you understand how technical analysis works, then there's only one or two, you know, pretty much one outcome to look forward to, all right? And what we did was we then took everything that we know and had the computer program, you know, algorithms to allow us to be able to see how to interpret those technical analysis data each and every day. And that's kind of like what this does here. And so if you see here on July 14, that was a chart that I was just showing you, on this day, the condition is saying, look, the market is beginning to turn bullish. This stock is beginning to turn bullish. That's what it's telling us. And what it's telling us to do is for that day, 
the only thing you should be thinking about is either buying, which is what you see right here where you say to buy, or cover, which is if you were short, you don't want to be short anymore. You need to cover your short. And that's kind of like what this is saying. So when you see that trade action that says buy cover, it's really saying, look, now it's time to start buying. The condition, the, 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 the market condition for this particular stock is so strong. And the fact that this section up here, this whole background here is green, this tells us that it's bullish. It's a strong bullish condition. This section right here is red. So this is a strong bearish condition, or at least it's a bearish condition. So in this case, over here is bullish. We see that on that day, July 14, the trade action was suggested to be a buy not place or stop, not, you know, short the market, not sit on the sideline, but you need to be buying. The very next day, the same thing. Hey, if you didn't buy yesterday, now is the time to buy. And then people start asking, well, what do we do? How do we know is this going to go up? When do we place our stop? Notice what it doesn't tell you to do. It doesn't tell you to place a stop. It just says, look, based on technical analysis, the only thing we should be doing is buying. Well, would you place a stop? Well, unless the software tells us to place a stop, we don't worry about placing a stop. Because then the next thing comes and all it tells us to do now was wait. It's showing us now the condition has changed from strong to fair. Meaning it's like, look, now you can still get in, but it's not as strong as it was a couple of days ago. And the trade recommendation would be to just hold and wait. Meaning that if you are already in, just hold on to your positions. Don't do anything, which is very cool because it's not even telling us to sell, nor is it telling us to place your stop. Just like today's the day, don't worry about doing anything, right? If you were not in the trade, it's saying, wait, you already missed the bullet on this one. Go find something else. Don't try to jump in. You could jump in, but try not to. Go find something else. And the reason why we program it that way is because, again, the true credit goes to who? those who see the setup. So what we've got the software doing is help us to find these setups. And then each and every day along the way is to kind of guide us and say, should we still stay in? Should we be placing a stop? Should we do nothing? Or should we be getting out of this trade? So if you've ever been in a situation it's like, oh my gosh, I bought the stock. I sold too quickly only to see the stock keep on running. That's one of the things the software will help you eliminate is not having to sell too early. OK, but at the same time, if you're wondering, when do I get out? I don't want to be in for too long only to give it all back. It would also let you know when you should be getting out. It would tell you when to place your stop and when not. Do you see the next day? I told you, don't do anything. On this day, even with the big wick going down over here on this day right here, it said the same thing. Don't do anything. You didn't have to do anything that day. Now, up here, it said, look. Now this uptrend is becoming a little weaker. So it's time to go ahead and place your stop. So that means that if you bought when it first recommended it here, or if you bought when it recommended it here, at this point, on the, at the end of the day where that low is, that's where you would place your stop. But that's all you had to do on that day. You didn't have to buy more. You didn't have to sell. You didn't have to sit on the sideline. It's actually telling you, go in and place your stop. This was the first time that it suggested go in and place a stop. Let me go back to this um, uh, presentation that I was doing. That's the same thing that you see right here. Um, buying call options. If you had bought call options when I first recommended it on July 20, on July 14, the call options on that time, the $35 call option, which is just one strike out of the money, cost you about $190. Okay, we've now seen what's happened today. This is today, ladies and gentlemen. I actually got an alert. This was an alert that came on my cell phone today. This was the alert that came in today because we put an alert to say, let us know we were watching when we got in, we expected it to reach all time highs. Okay, now maybe not necessarily all time highs, but we know that when they show up, they usually take out the biggest resistance. Uh, that is there. We knew it was going to take out this resistance, no problem, because that was just too close. We were aiming for this and said, look, alert us when it gets to that level right there. Well, it's done that. Not only did it cross that level, but today, you know, all-time highs. That's what we saw here today. 
the stock is doing really well. Anybody can go look and see, which is really cool because look, all the time when it was rallying, most people would have said, oh, it's going to hit this resistance here, or I've reached my uh, two for one risk reward, which is fine, nothing wrong with that. But what we love about the software is it lets us know how long to stay in each and every day, just as one action, which is either to place a stop, sell, buy, or do nothing. And because of that, we're able to ride this all out. So as of today, the software has still not told us to sell, nor has it told us to, I mean, it hasn't told us to sell. And, you know, the only thing it told us to do was place a stop and our stop hasn't been triggered. And that's all we had to do. So even as of today, in seven days, the stock is already, the option is already up 73%. That same contract we bought for $190 is now worth $330, but we don't plan on selling that until the software tells us. So could it go higher? Probably. The interesting thing is we'll use each and every day as technical analysis tells us when we should be getting out. We'll do it at that point in time, okay? All right, so, um, you know, people say, look, I've studied candlesticks before, Wally. You know, but your teaching really puts rhyme to reason. I can tell you, born teacher, you found the answer far more than I could learn on my own. Um, what we've done with this software is literally we've taken three of our best candlestick stickers. And the only reason why we put that in this is like, look, we don't need to be trading every single pattern out there, but there are some very unique patterns. Bottoms up is one of those that we've now put into the software and said, look, scan for that each and every day. And when we see those, that the first thing is now we've seen opportunity. We've identified good opportunities. Then the second thing is, look, we need to know what to do each and every day. Should we be selling? Should we hold on to it? Do we need to be panicking or ignore all the noise that is out there? The beauty of the algorithms is it doesn't care about the news. It doesn't care about you know what other people are saying out there. All he sees is what's happening with that particular stock, whether it's time to start exercise and caution or leave it just the way it is or should we be buying more and that's all that does okay um also um you'll see right here this is another uh testimony from one of our students about our knowledge as far as candlesticks is concerned um you know what i didn't talk about is the vix but you know i share this because um the vix is something that allows us to see what is happening in the market and Understanding when the VIX is telling you that it's getting ready to spike, and you can see those patterns as well, and they are very clear. And when the VIX is saying, nope, it's done, it's ready to go down, those are important things to know. So um, that is it for my presentation. Um, what I'm gonna do is share with you the offer that I have for anybody who might be interested. And at the same time, if you have any questions, you know, please feel free to ask those questions. I don't mind answering questions. But while I do that, I'll just go through my offer and you know, hopefully you guys take advantage of that. Um, the first thing is I'm gonna be having a workshop this coming Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Uh, you can go to the link that you see down there below, rightsidetrading.com forward slash expo to sign up. If, uh, if you cannot attend the uh, live presentation, it is going to be recorded. So for anybody who might not have the uh, recording, uh, just be aware that it's going to be there. Uh, it's going to be recorded. Okay. Are there bottoms up opposite setup? Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, we also have the scan for that too as well. So actually, uh, let me let me do this uh, before I do that. Uh, here is the price of the workshop, uh, but we are doing a special right now. So just want to let you know, $2.99 gets you in. And I'm going to show you some other things that would uh, help you too that we are going to give to you guys to kind of help you with that, okay? Um, I'm gonna paste that in the link right now for anybody who might be interested. You can see, uh, you'll see that very soon. Uh, but at the end of the day, yes, there is the bullish version of it. There's the bearish version of it. Anybody who knows us, we also have uh, uh, another candlestick that we consider really, really powerful called the right side candle. We have another candlestick that we call the hilltop, which is the one that helps us see when the crash is about to happen. Because again, there are patterns that let you know a crash is about to happen. Uh, like you saw in that report that I wrote, it wasn't by coincidence that we saw the warning signs ahead of time before the market crash, and we saw the warning signs that the market was ready to rally, right? And so being able to see those patterns and know what to do with them is important, okay? 
So in this Magenta software, the offer that I'm doing right now is you come to the workshop on Tuesday night, we'll go into those three candlesticks. We'll go into the right side, we'll go into the hilltop, we'll go into what we call the uh, bottoms up. We'll go into details about that so you understand the nuances of that, when to use them, when not to use them, all that kind of stuff. But we'll also give you access to the software too as well. Now we'll give you access to the software for the next three months. So you get a 90 day access to the software so that you can use the software once you understand the nuances of you know these three important candlesticks out there you can then go and use the software to kind of guide you and help you with that all right and so that's kind of like what we're doing here um also i'm going to give you access to my right side report for those 90 days as well too and so every week you will get a report and uh believe me when i say the insight into these reports we've seen i mean just this past june 29th uh june 29th so almost a month ago um i actually took an excerpt of that if you go to our youtube channel you'll see an excerpt of that i took an excerpt of that workshop uh where we were discussing what we wrote in the report because every monday night we meet together and we talk about what is in the right side report so i write a report i send it out on sunday and then people come on monday and we talk about that in addition to what's going on in the market as well as some trade setups and opportunities out there but on that day, I told him, I said, guys, the market is ready to go high again. And I said, you know, this was June. I said, the market is ready to go higher. We're about to go even higher, probably even take out all time highs. The market has already been going higher, but it's like the market paused for about three weeks and it's like, it's ready to go again. And so being able to see that information and know, you know, what we see every single week, what the market is telling us every single week, how to be prepared for it, uh, you'll get to have access to that for the next 90 days. All right and uh, be able to use that for yourself. Um, also, I'm gonna talk about the VIX as well because we always talk about the VIX, it's important. This is how we can see whether we should be trusting what we hear or not, all right? People can say whatever they wanna say, but we can see what is really happening by looking at the VIX. You know, and most people are not aware of, I mean, you know, chances are that a lot of people say, okay, yeah, the VIX is below the certain level, then everything is fine. But how would you like to know when the VIX is getting ready to spike? Like not after spike, but it's getting ready to spike, which means that if the VIX is getting ready to spike, you're gonna start expecting the market to drop. And how would it also like to know when the spike, the volatility in the VIX is over? So that that way, once it's over, you know, oh, wow, the volatility VIX is over, it's time for us to start getting back into the market. I mean, these are huge, huge things. And this is not a hunch. This is not just gut feeling. These are things that you can literally see the pattern show up over and over and over again. Here is a text that I sent to one of our students. Uh, you can see right here on March 24th, right here. Uh, you can see the date down there, March 24th. Uh, and you can see it was very concise, straight to the point. The VIX is ready, okay? Meaning that the VIX is ready to go down. Markets are getting ready to start rallying again. That was March 24th. So you remember how we saw the bottom of 23rd, 24th? And then on the 27th, which is that weekend, we wrote that in our report. Well, this is what we saw on the 24th. And that was 7 a.m. So we had seen that the day prior, which was on March 23rd. Most people think, oh, March 23rd, you can go back in hindsight and see it. We actually saw it as it was happening. And that's why the very next morning at 7 a.m., I was texting, you know, some of my students that the VIX is ready now, meaning that the volatility is over in the VIX. The volatility is over in the VIX. It's going to come coming down. And because it's coming down, the market is going to start rallying. Get ready. Right. And that's how we're able to see. I mean, again, it's it's not like I have this, you know, expert, you know, uh, 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 extra touch in the market. It's just is being able to see the data and learn what data is communicating. And that's all we did, literally. That's all we did, and anybody can do this. So this is it again um, for $2.99. That's the special. It's gonna go um, from now until Sunday. We'll make it available to Sunday for $2.99. If you sign up, you'll come in on Tuesday night. We'll go into detail. We'll, go, we'll talk about the VIX so you can learn how to see that. Uh, we'll, we'll give you our video on our VIX volatility strategy as well. Uh, you get the 90-day access to our right side report. You will get access to our Magenta software for the next 90 days. And you also get to come to these live webinars that we do, okay? Um, you get to come to those live webinars um, 
as well. So for the next 90 days, you'll be with me and you'll see, you know, step by step, week by week, how we're seeing what we're seeing ahead of time, not in hindsight. And that's the whole point of our company, right side trading, because it's not the left side trading. You're welcome, Vicky. Absolutely. You're welcome. Uh, it's not about left side trading or hindsight trading. It's right side trading, being able to see those setups ahead of time. Okay. And then um, this, this feature, as far as the scans is concerned, uh, you know, this is something we just added recently. So you can now see if I go over here and I hit scan, what would happen is it will populate on this page where, you know, this whole buy cover, remember where it was, look, the market is telling us it's time to buy. This whole buy cover is just letting you know, you can run a scan for this, get results, and it will just, you know, do a buy cover for that. Or you can go here and what you see is we can choose any one of these patterns. Okay, do you want to see the bottoms up candlesticks on the daily chart that is saying it's time to buy today? Okay, as it is happening, you know, you can do that. You can go here, you can say, look, let me see all the bullish ones. Uh, I can't remember who it was that was asking about the, the bearish one. Uh, you can, you can click on the bearish as well. You know, you can go over here, pick bottoms up, click bearish, hit the get results. It will come up with a list of stocks. Okay. Uh, you can go here. You can say, look, I only want the bullish versions. And so you can go here and you can, you know, click that and it'll show you that. Now, we didn't talk about the right side candle, the hilltop, which are two very powerful ones as well, too. The hilltop is the one that tells you the market is going to crash or a market is going to turn into a humongous rally. But either way, you can do that, too, as well. You can go to, you know, I can pick this and go here and pick the bullish version or I can put the bearish version of the hilltop as well as if the market is ready to go down. We can do our sell short, too, as well, where now we can see which ones are ready to go down and then do that, too, as well. Now, is this relevant only to stocks? Yes. Now, we do have Forex in there. You can do Forex. And if you are uh, Canadian, uh, we also have Canadian stocks in there too as well. Uh, no futures at this point, but we do have Forex. We have stocks, uh, US equities and Canadian equities as well, okay? Um, bottoms up is the opposite setup of the high of the market. Bottom up is the opposite setup of the high of the market. I'm not sure what you mean by that, active trader. If bottoms up is the opposite of the high of the market, uh, the, maybe the the reverse, if that's what you mean. Okay, um, but yes, you know, if it's if it's the reverse, it's when we see the bearish versions of the bottoms up. Okay, when we see the bearish versions of the bottoms up, uh, what we want is to make sure that it says sell short. Okay, we want to make sure that it sells short, um, and then we go from there. Um, do you have to buy or rent it? Um, it is It is just, I guess it's, it's a monthly fee um, after the 30 day, a 90 day trial, okay? It's really a 90 day trial. Um, you get to test it out for 90 days. And then after the 90 days, um, if you want to keep it at that point in time, um, you can, you can uh, rent it out for the price at that time, okay? But go to that link, ladies and gentlemen, my time is up. Um, so just go to that link right there. Uh, oops, sorry, that's not the right one. Uh, this link right here and, and just sign up. And if you have any questions, email us at info at rightsidetrading.com. All right. Thank you so much, Anna. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to you. My time is up. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. You're welcome, guys. Take care.